We're lucky to have Anita Menon joining us today. Anita uh, comes with us with a wealth of experience across financial services, working in KPMG for a number of years, uh, currently uh, the Chief Risk Officer for Prudential. She's also just recently uh, the winner of the Top 50 Women in Islamic Business and Finance Award. First question, Anita, how do you empower uh, others around you and how do you set the tone in your division? I think the behaviors and culture of an organization is a direct reflection of the uh, leadership style of uh, the leaders in the organization. And for me, empowerment um, is basically about uh, trust and delegation. So, uh, and it's also about setting upfront, you know, what are your expectations from your team members and setting the objectives uh, upfront so that mm. uh, they are aware of their responsibilities. You may notice it's an Asian phenomenon where people tend to be very polite. Uh, so, you know, I actively encourage my team to speak out and voice their opinions um, as it's really about two-way communication. And for me personally, it's also my role to drive actions and, you know, foster teamwork. The other thing which I feel is really critical is um, communication and providing that in a timely basis. So I take the opportunity to try and communicate the why, um, you know, as famously mentioned by Simon Sinek. I'm really excited um, that we've just recently launched an app called uh, Tell Me. Okay. And uh, the, the app has been rolled out to all levels of staff uh, to allow them to be able to provide direct feedback in real time. There are a lot of challenges for people. What do you think the biggest challenge for the next generation of women is? There are huge opportunities for the current generation of women. And um, especially with the COVID-19 crisis, we saw uh, many leaders such as Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who demonstrated that it was possible to be a strong yet empathetic leader. But having said that, I think women still face a number of challenges. This conflict between work life, where society still tends to place an expectation that women do more of the heavy lifting at work, um, as well as at home. And um, that tends to put a little bit more pressure on them. How I respond to that as a mother and as a leader, uh, and I'm a mother of two boys, so I keep encouraging my boys and advising them that um, responsibility at home is equally shared between both men and women. And I think, uh, you know, that's a message that we women leaders uh, can impart to our families. Secondly, I think uh, women uh, face unequal treatment when it comes to food and uh, opportunities. Uh, that's an area where we try uh, very much to have uh, diversity and inclusion as an agenda. Next question, traits of leaders you admire, either male or female, what sort of resonates and sticks with you? The first thing that comes to my mind is authenticity. And I think um, increasingly leadership is really about being true to yourself and being authentic. And I've had the privilege of working with um, many such leaders in the course of my career. They have a clear vision and they have a strong set of values. And um, they're also people who are willing to mentor and lift others along the way. Uh, they you know, tend to provide credit when it's due, um, at the same time being highly professional as well. And I also admire leaders who have the courage of their convictions and they're willing to speak up even if it may not be the popular choice to do so. I think the other thing that's important is having a sense of humor uh, to me, um, because I think that helps you to create a bond with your team members. Conversely, I think uh, I also have no time for leaders who believe they need to uh, sort of run others down in order, in order to get ahead. What are some of the leadership lessons you've taken away along your journey from them? Personally, uh, my values have sort of dictated the organizations that I've worked with. And uh, when you have a strong set of values and guiding principles, I think it's easier to make decisions. And uh, paying attention to details is a big one for me as well, because uh, as they say, the devil is in the details. Um, I think the other thing is always be willing to impart your knowledge. So I enjoy mentoring uh, other women as well as men in their career journey. It's important to be empathetic as uh, this really allows you to create 
you know, this bond of trust with your people. And I'm also a firm believer that uh, it's good to surround yourself and bring on board people with very diverse views because they can then bring a fresh perspective and they can challenge you rather than being surrounded by people who think alike. Lastly, I think as a leader, uh, it's always important that we remain grounded and we practice humility. Next question. Your advice or some strategies you have for women who are trying to get more prominent roles or leadership roles in historically male dominated either job functions or industries? Progress starts with awareness, right? And in recent years, we've seen and read about women in the media who played prominent roles in uh, traditionally male dominated industries. And that Oh, that helps to create awareness and at the same time, it helps to inspire other women, hopefully, to pursue similar careers. The, um, I think the second important factor would be to build a support system and uh, build a network and um, you know, identify allies as you progress in the organization, which is something men are generally better at. And I think women can sort of take a leap from that. Uh, thirdly, I think it's about removing this unconscious bias that uh, we tend to have. When I was at KPMG and um, right now at Prudential BSN, we, we certainly don't lack women in the workplace. But what I observe is that as they get higher in the organization, uh, women tend to drop out or opt out of the uh, workplace due to this unconscious bias and the fact that you know they are the ones who are expected to uh, perhaps give up their careers in order to focus on their families. So men, on the other hand, uh, don't have such pressure. And I think if more and more organizations are able to address that, uh, that would certainly help women in a long way. Next question. If I were a brand, I would be? I would say Amazon. And um, it's really interesting to me that what started off as an online platform uh, primarily selling books, has now evolved to um, a one-stop shop, I would say, you know, for literally any and every imaginable good. And it's truly inspiring to see the way how Jeff Bezos built up uh, the brand and built up the business. Uh, he, of course, you know, brought in people again with very diverse backgrounds. And um, I sort of see that um, somewhat related to my own personal and professional journey. What are some ways that you've gained more confidence in yourself? I think for me, what's worked is uh, really taking risks and stepping out of my comfort zone. I keep going back to taking risks, which may sound unusual coming from a CRO, uh, but um, it's really all about calculated risks. As an example, I you know, was working in KPMG as a partner in a big four firm and I really enjoyed that role. But when I had this opportunity come up to join through the SN, I, I took the role as I really wanted to step out of my, my comfort zone and to challenge and to uh, sort of continuous, continuously learn new things. Uh, prior to that, I worked in the STEM industry and um, I started my life as a scientist. But along the way, I realized that it's not really my cup of tea. You know, I really enjoyed working with people okay. much more. Um, hence the switch to consulting and financial services. So I think each of these experiences have been really uh, and truly invaluable. And, you know, that's probably huge, uh, to some extent my leadership style as well. The other way that um, I sort of build confidence is really um, through speaking at conferences or publishing thought leadership. Um, um, firstly, I enjoy that connection with people, but at the same time, that helps me build confidence as well. Um, and the other thing I think most of all is having a sense of purpose and passion in whatever you do. I'm a huge advocate that you must be passionate about what you do. What energizes you? I enjoy um, sitting down with my team and brainstorming new ideas, solutions to um, existing problems or issues that we have. And um, I, I enjoy working on different projects, and um, which allows me to collaborate with different teams. But uh, mostly, I think uh, the work that we do here uh, and realizing that it plays a key 
role in the lives of our customers, you know, where we are there, we are able to be there for them in their times of need. That really, you know, energizes me. At home or personally, um, it's really about um, spending time with my family and friends. I love exercising, so it's about going to the gym or, um, you know, going for an early morning run. Um, that, that really puts me in the right frame of mind in the morning. Um, it's also spending time with my boys, uh, watching a really, you know, funny movie. And, um, you know, generally that's, that's the sort of way that I uh, de-stress. The first woman you looked up to and, and why was it her and, and what was the, the real value you took from it? My role would be my mom. My mom came from a traditional Indian background and she was a homemaker but she was also someone who had a fierce sense of responsibility and uh, independence. And from her, I learned that, you know, I could go out there and achieve whatever I set my mind on. If I were to choose someone in the corporate field, um, it would be Indra Nui, who was the former chairman and CEO of PepsiCo. With her, I was hugely inspired by her story about how she moved to the US and, you know, she met challenges headlong. She became the CEO of a top 500 um, mm. company. And uh, the sort of decisions that she made every step of the way. And I think what really uh, resonated with me was um, she came across as being a fairly grounded and humble person. Uh, I recall reading somewhere where she mentioned that um, when she came back home from the office, she left her CEO title at the door. Uh, her focus was really very much just about the family and being a part of the family. So to me, that's um, that you know that's that's the hallmark of a true, truly humble leader. Last question: Your bravest moments, and then how do you practice bravery? When I first returned to Malaysia after completing my master's and um, it was the financial crisis uh, at that time and the first financial crisis in Malaysia and I landed a job in Port Klang in Malaysia. So my responsibilities as an account manager uh, was managing shipping lines as well as freight forwarders and logistics operators. So you can imagine, John, this was a field uh, many years ago, which was traditionally very male dominated. Very few women played a key role. And I recall in my initial, you know, couple of months when I started, I and I had to meet these freight forwarders and I was initially met with a bit of a degree of hostility, I would say. But in time, um, you know, I won their respect because I demonstrated that I could do the job. In my next stage of my career uh, in KPMG, and this is something that's kind of stuck with me, I remember that I had a couple of tough assignments where uh, I had to cover um, Africa. Uh, and in Africa, it was you know not Cape Town or something, but it was uh, Nigeria and Ghana, uh, where it was a little rougher, and uh, Mongolia. So uh, the assignments were fairly challenging and the, the clients were very demanding and I had to stand up for my team on many occasions and uh, despite being a fairly young leader myself at that time. So I realized that uh, when we are clear in terms of what our purpose is, then um, it, it is easier to you know, become brave as a leader. And uh, I think the other thing which I realized is when you're faced with a tough situation, you can either sort of step back, um, you know, and, and shrink in, into yourself or that you can step up and meet the challenge headlong. So that's what I typically tend to do. I think it's excellent. So keep doing what you're doing and thank you so much for your time.